Hi everybody, this is Keith. We're going to take a few moments and discuss what exactly is a VLAN compared to interface VLAN. That's one of the biggest questions that comes up over and over again. This video is going to settle that for you once and for all. I've got a couple PCs here. I've got a PC named Brody right here and it's at the IP address of 11.0.0.2 and I've got a PC over here on the right called Paul. It's at the IP address 22.0.0.2 also. So the different networks, 22 network and the 11 network, the host bits are the same, but they're on different logical layer 3 networks. I've also, on the switch, assigned the ports that this computer is connected to and the port that this computer is connected to to different VLANs. So on the switch, I went into interface configuration mode, uh, into interface FA01 on the switch, and I said switch port mode access to tell it that it's going to be an access port, and I said switch port access VLAN 17. And that is the magic that makes this PC part of VLAN 17. We can put any IP address we want to on this device, but as far as controlling what VLAN it belongs to at layer 2, that's the switch's job. Over here on switch port FA0 slash 24, we did the similar treatment. We went into interface configuration mode and said interface FA0 slash 24, switch port mode access, and switch port access VLAN, and we said 19. Now this switch has two active broadcast domains because there's devices in those two VLANs. There's also VLAN 1 but without any devices in it and no logical interfaces in it that are operating there's no traffic there. So for all intents and purposes we have two broadcast domains um, one that Paul's in and one that Brody's in. Now normally we would have a logical layer 3 address that we would use in association with the VLAN. So in this case, VLAN 17 is going to have the 11 network. So if we added more devices, we had another device here, another device here, another device there. Um, if we added those to VLAN 17, we would want to also give those devices a logical layer 3 address in the 11 IP addressing space. Does that make sense? Fantastic. Well, here's the problem that I need your help with. Once we've set this up, Brody and Paul, although they have an IP address configured, they can't talk to each other. In fact, let's back up even further from that. They can't even ping the switch. Why can't you ping a switch? If it's a brand new switch and you bring it up, why can't you ping it? And the reason is, it doesn't have an IP address. What? Yeah. The switches don't come with IP addresses pre-configured from Cisco. They don't know what your network looks like. So it has no no IP address on the switch whatsoever. It has two VLANs, two broadcast domains. We created them. We created VLAN 7T when we assigned this port to it and we created VLAN 19 when we assigned that port to it. So it has two VLANs but it has no IP addresses. If we want to be able to telnet or connect to this switch to manage it, we need to give the switch an IP address. So what we're going to do is we're going to make on the switch a logical interface is called get this and a VLAN interface or a switched virtual interface they're all the same thing SVI switched virtual interface interface VLAN for example 17 that we're talking about the same exact thing when we type in interface VLAN 17 we're going to create out of smoke and mirrors, this logical interface that we can then assign an IP address to. Well, if we create interface VLAN 17, which would logically be working with all the devices that are also in that same VLAN, we would want to give interface VLAN 17 an IP address from this same subnet. In this case, it would be the 11 network. When we go in and on switch the switch, we also create interface VLAN 19, poof, you've got another logical interface. And for interface VLAN 19, because it's going to be associated with any of the devices in that same broadcast domain, you'd want to give interface VLAN 19 an IP address in that same network space as well. Otherwise, these guys can't reach it. So here's what we'll do. We'll go ahead and create these two brand new VLAN interfaces. The VLANs exist, but we're going to create the VLAN interfaces. I'll walk you through it step by step. We'll give interface VLAN 17 an IP address of 11.0.0.1 and we'll give the VLAN 9 interface, the logical interface, an IP address of 22.0.0.1. Now we're not giving the actual ports 
IP addresses on the switch. We're giving the logical VLAN interface the IP address. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Let's start by taking a look at what VLANs exist. There should be at least the two that we created. Show VLAN brief. And there they are. There's VLAN 17. And VLAN 17, just the broadcast domain, the logical broadcast domain, has only one port, and that's Brody's computer on FA01 of the switch. And it has FA, it has VLAN 19 with FA0 slash 24. That's Paul's. Let's take a look at that real quick just to confirm. All right, so we've got all of our pieces there. Now, we have those VLANs, but we don't have virtual interfaces for each of those VLANs. Let me show you what I mean. Here back on the switch, if we did a, a show, we'll just do a show run. And we'll go near to the bottom of show run. And notice at the bottom of show run, we have this, by default, this interface VLAN 1. It's shut down, not being used. So what we're going to do is we're going to create, out of smoke and mirrors, we're just going to create a logical interface VLAN 17. Now, please get it straight. VLAN 17, the actual broadcast domain, it already exists. We looked at that a moment ago. We're simply going to create a logical interface that we can put an IP address on so that we can actually ping this switch and communicate with this switch based on IP. This is also called a management interface. So a switched virtual interface, interface VLAN X, or a management interface, we're talking about the same logic here. So let's go to configuration mode and we'll simply say interface VLAN and we'll use VLAN 17 and poof we just created interface VLAN 17 and now you can give it a, an IP address IP address of 11.0.0.1 with a one octet mask and it's done now we'll go ahead and create the second logical interface interface VLAN it was 19 and in this interface this logical interface we'll do an IP address of 22.0.0.1 and check this out now if we do a show run and I'll scroll down to the bottom pretty quickly here check these new interfaces out that we have we have interface VLAN 7 and interface VLAN 19 these are the logical interfaces they're switched virtual interfaces you could call these management interfaces it's all the same and check this out if we wanted to ping to uh, the PCs. Now the PCs, let's take a look at the diagram. The PCs are at 11.0.0.2 and 22.0.0.2. Because we have logical IP addresses in each of those VLANs, we should be able to ping both devices. Let's verify that we can do that right now. And we'll do a ping of 22.0.0.2.Okay, we lost one on the ARP resolution, no problem. Uh, the second five should go through. And we'll ping also um, 11.0.0.2, which is Brody. We should lose one on the ARP, and then the other four should go through, and then it should be smooth sailing from there. One last piece, can Brody ping uh, Paul, those two computers? Well, they're on different VLANs. They're on different subnets. This router, the switch that we're on, excuse me, has a layer three component to it. Not just the management interfaces, it can also, this is a 3560, it can do actual routing. It's a device that is doing layer two functionality, but it can also do routing. Check this out. We'll go to router configuration mode, IP routing, and now it's on. This guy is just for all intents and purposes now a router as well. If we go back to the diagram, here's how it'll work. If PC, if Brody's PC is using 11001 as the default gateway, and Paul's PC is using 22001, the switch virtual interface on the switch as a default gateway, they should be able to ping each other. So let's test that as our final checkout here. Let's go to Brody's PC. Okay, so here we are on Brody's PC. We're checking the IP address. It's 11.0.0.2. Default gateway is 11001. Looks like somebody was thinking ahead on that one. That would be me. And let's go ahead and do a ping of 22.0.0.2. That's Paul on the far side and life is good. A switched virtual interface is a logical interface that's associated with an existing VLAN. That's it. Thanks for watching everybody.